Kid Rock. On our today's throwback spotlight segment. Um, so this is my choice. Um, Bro. Yeah. I forgot my e-cigarette upstairs. Go grab it real quick. I'm going to go grab it. All right, I'll talk. Hold it down. All right. Um, I picked Kid Rock's Devil Without a Cause because I think, I remember it being a pretty good album back when it came out. Um, I still have, you know, memories of Ba With The Ba and Cowboy being played on the radio and like them being the fucking jams of those times, you know. Um, My dad listened to this album quite a bit, so I got a little bit of nostalgia for it. When it came out, I was like knee deep in my uh, ICP Juggalo uh, phase like knee fucking deep um so it didn't really grab me back then you know like i liked it uh i thought it was cool he was from detroit you know i i gave him a chance because i knew he had done song us a song with icp and shit so um i was open to the idea of kid rock but it couldn't h- hook me back then you know I, I wasn't ready for it i don't think but um i let's so going into this album listening to it i expected like to like Ba with the Ba Cowboy and like there's a couple other random songs that I, I actually did remember. Um, let me pull it up real quick. Um, I remember like I Am the Bull God um, and uh, the song Black Chick White Guy. My dad, for some reason, that song really got him. I remember him listening to that a lot. <laughs> but uh, I just think it was because like not too many artists around this time really were t- telling like stories. You know, this is 1998. Um, you know, you, you had like I guess I, I wasn't well versed in rap, but I didn't know of many other people really doing like story type songs. You know what I mean? Back then, I, I again other than ICP because that's all I was listening to. I think it was more prevalent then than it is now. Really? Okay. Uh, but anyways, I think that maybe that's why it gripped my dad. But nevertheless, I, I liked it too. Uh, but I didn't remember any of the other songs on here, so I was kind of going into this like expecting to really dislike all the other songs, um, similar to how I've been on like the when we did like. Um, bloodhound gangs album like i liked some of the other songs but they were all forgettable same with like green day for me like i liked some of the other songs but i don't even remember what they're called at this point but man i gotta tell you like i don't want to cut you off but, <laughs> okay um, <laughs> um like i want you to say everything you got to say but i i do think it's important to know i don't know that this album's aged well okay i think because i have a lot to say about a lot of different things here but like i think at the time this was probably a better album than it is now okay Maybe I don't think it's like like I don't, I don't think when we grade this it's gonna be a fair assessment because this sounds like it belongs in its time. Okay, well, right before you cut me off, I was about to say I thoroughly enjoyed this album this time around, and that's you know exact opposite of what kind of what you were saying there because I expected not to like it, but I end up liking it way more than I thought I would. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't even know that Eminem was on this album; had no clue. Um, and so when I, when like he, he's like, Hey, Slim Shady, go, I fucking hear Eminem. I'm like, Oh shit. What the fuck? Wow. Cool. You know, that was neat, you know, especially for being 1998, you know, that might, this might've even been before, was that before Slim Shady LP came out? It was probably in the same year, right? No, you don't remember Slim Shady LPs, 1997. Was it? Okay. Um, okay. You sure? I'm fairly certain. All right. Anyways, it's irrelevant. Nevertheless, I liked it. I'm glad it was on. Um, I like. I'll, I liked every song on this album. Like, there's a few that were just okay, you know. But I still liked them. Like, I didn't skip a single song. Like, even on my second, third, I listened to this album probably three or four times this past week. At Ooh, least. I lied. It's 99. Okay. Um, so I listened to this song three. This album three or four times over the past week, and like, I didn't find myself skipping any. Like, I really enjoyed listening to to a lot of songs. Um, I really liked. Um, I got one for you. Like he's like, I got whatever, twenty shots in my nine, and I got one for you. That shit was pretty dope. He had a lot of like rock type sound and shit in this, and um, it actually reminded me that like you know, I knew Kid Rock was a rapper back then, but you know he's kind of taken on this rock slash country pop vibe over the last few years. He's going through a few evolutions, um, but like this album, like it really does show that like. It's it's starting, you know what I mean. Several of these songs have like a almost a country type of um, like a rockish vibe to them. You know what I mean. A lot of guitars, shit like that. But man, I really liked it. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to keep droning on and on because I didn't. I don't think it was amazing by any stretch of the imagination. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend this album to anybody. I think it's a good album. Like, um, 
I wanted to like not like it as much as I did, but I, you know, you like what you like, you know, you feel it or not. Um, I don't know, man. I, I got to give this album. Um, I think it's a solid nine. I really, really liked it. <laughs> I was glad. I was glad I picked it. I, I picked it on a whim and I really liked it more than I thought it was going to. So that was a nice surprise, man. And I have a feeling you didn't feel the same. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> um, no, I had like nostalgia for a lot of these songs. I had nostalgia for Ball with the Ball, Cowboy. Um, what were the other ones? The what was the other single? Um, um probably uh, the, Only God yeah, Knows that one. Why. Yeah, I forgot God that song why. was even a single, and I, so, I I I really enjoyed listening to that song. This I time had around. like nostalgia for those. Yeah. So um, I expected to enjoy the album based off that. Yeah. Um, when I listened to this. I found that those are the only ones that I liked. And really? I have to believe that it has have, has to be because of nostalgia. Yeah. I have to believe that if I didn't like those at the time, I probably wouldn't like those now. Okay. I don't know that to be the case. But I did enjoy those three. Okay. I did not like any of the rest of this album. Really? What about, about the, I'm just sitting here just wasting time drinking, smoking. No. Wasn't that a single too? I think it probably was. I think it um, was. But I didn't like any of this. I thought it was kind of a gross album. <laughs> I feel like a lot of it was him talking about like eating pussy and like yeah talking about his dick and stuff right which I wouldn't mind so much except for Kid Rock is kind of gross to begin with <laughs> so just like the image of like Kid Rock sexualizing himself is weird <laughs> okay um I did not know Eminem was on the album you didn't even listen to that song no I listened oh, to the whole I'm album I'm sorry my bad I did not know Eminem was on the album and then yeah. he came on. And I was like, whoa, I like, <laughs> yeah, didn't right. see that coming. And it made perfect sense. Sure. Like, after thinking about it, like, why wouldn't Eminem be on this album? Like, yeah. he should be on this album. Sure. But um, I really like that song, too. I thought, I thought the song was terrible. Wow. I thought Eminem was all right. Okay. But I definitely think Eminem, I mean, obviously, this is early Eminem, so it's kind of different. Like, infinite. But, like, he sounds like... He freestyled his whole verse. <laughs> okay. He didn't even sound like he wrote. He yeah, sounded like he just got on there and did his Eminem thing. Yeah. And it's cool, but like, he didn't even seem like he was taking it that serious. He calls Kid Rock a long hair hippie in his verse. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, that was weird. Um, and they almost didn't match and they like kind of broke themselves apart. So it almost wasn't even like they did something together. So like okay. they took two things and just kind of stuck them together. Sure. Um, I really thought, like, with, like, the backup singers and stuff, like, this sounded very 90s, yeah. very commercial. Okay. Um, it sounded very dated to me. Okay. It sounded like it didn't age well. I, what, the last song, Black Chick, White Guy. Yeah. I remember listening to that in the car thinking, this sounds like Tom McDonald. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah. And that was before I. Heard I thought Black that song Eye. was fucking sweet because it's it has it's it's honestly not about race at all. Like no, no, it's not. And literally, it's not in about the least. race. You're you're absolutely. So how's it, how's it sound like Tom McDonald? Because he named it black chick white guy. Oh, when that's not what it's about, and you go out of your way to say that it's like you're you're the white guy coming into the rap game, and you're trying to tell everybody like I know my music's a little redneck. Sure, I want you to know. By the way. I'm down with y'all. Okay. Um, like it was like it was trying too hard for me. I mean, me. if that's what he was trying natural. to do, it's, if that's what he was trying to do, it didn't sound like out of place or like weird to me at all. Like you're right, the song is not about that. Yeah, it's about like their relationship, and yeah. having kids and shit, and like how that affects everything. Like I get that, but um, yeah, it sounded like trying a little too hard. Okay. Um, ball with the ball. Mm -hmm. I when that came on, it didn't sound like I remembered it to sound. Really. Yeah, it sounded like way more amphitheatery hmm. in the song than I remember. It sounded more studio in my mind, and then like I listened to it, and it sounded almost amphitheaterish. It was, but I liked it still. Um, but yeah, that was it. Was a weird album, and this is from a time past. I I don't think anybody needs to be listening to this right <laughs> now. Okay, and I, I like I said, I think at the time it was probably a better album. Okay, like I don't think that my assessment of it in 2019 is fair. Yeah. Because, like, this is 20 years old, bro. Like, at the time, this was... Like, I was in elementary school when this came out. I remember. Sure. Like, this was a thing. Mm -hmm. And it was cool then. So, like, I'm not trying to shit on Kid Rock, but, like, I just don't think it aged well. Okay. All right, that's fair uh, enough, man. What do you give it? It's got three songs I like. It's got an Eminem feature, so I'll give it a few points for that. 
and I do think it's probably better in its time than it is now. So okay. I'll edge it a little on the side of caution. I'll err on the side of caution here. I'll give it a I'll give it a five point five. Okay. I don't think that's no, I don't think it was like the worst thing that. ever, but like it's, it, it's not. It just goes thing. to show like our taste because like I, this this album it doesn't necessarily I wouldn't say it speaks to me because I don't relate to anything Kid Rock's fucking saying in this whole album, but. I like the way he's saying it, and I think he, I think, say what you will about the man, he can write a good fucking song. Like, listening hook, to it wasn't torture. Like, verse, hook, verse, as far as that goes, like, he's good at making the songs, like, sound different. They, they he sticks to a topic or whatever, writes about it. Like, he's doing what I like, you know, when an artist sets out to make an album or sets out to make songs. The songs don't just sound filler. Like, they sound like, like, I bet you he really loved, like, all these songs. You know what I mean? Like, none of them were just like, yeah, throw that bitch on there. Yeah. You know, that's kind of like the vibe I get. Like, these were like the best of the best at the, for this album. And, you know, what's interesting is on the song Devil Without a Cause, like, he, he keeps saying he's going platinum and shit. Yeah. And, like, this album came out, this was, this was Kid Rock's, like, awakening, essentially. You know what I mean? Like, nobody knew who the fuck Kid Rock was before this album came out. He had that Grits Sandwich for Breakfast album or whatever, I think. Like, but no, that was a Detroit thing. And then this album came out and he, like, he set out to make like he's making a fucking real like album that this people sounded will like enjoy, there was a big you know? budget behind it. A what? A big budget. Yeah, for sure. Like he 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 took some time. He set out to make a make his piece of art, and I think he he did a great job at it, man. Like you know, I get it. I get all the criticism you said. I understand completely. But um, you know, I I it it really is more my shit. For I think sure. my assessment may sound hard. I didn't think this was terrible. Yeah. Like I didn't like. Like as far like as like I said, his it wasn't rapping torture listening to it. It wasn't like at any point I was like, I have to turn this off. It what do you think about his rapping? Like, eh. I think it was real. Eh. Yeah, it's his rapping has always just been eh to me. But like I said, I but think like, he's good not, at making when you're songs. You're not going to Kid Rock for bars. Right. You're going to Kid Rock for a vibe, and he does his vibe. So like, here's, I can't here, fault him for that. You know, what here's I'm a fun like, fact about it. you want to hear a fun fact about Kid Rock. I think you would like him. Um, if you didn't already know, he's like gone on this um campaign essentially to. Uh, make sure his ticket prices stay like affordable. Like he does not charge more than twenty five dollars for a ticket to any That's of his shows. Dope as fuck. And he's like he combats like Ticketmaster and all kinds of like venues of shit who want to like you know raise it or whatever. He like he's like I'm not doing it for more than you know. That's how much the fucking tickets are going to cost, and that that's it. That's the that's end. Dope. You know that's super that's dope. dope. Like he's you he, know he's like, he's kind of like a man of the people in that sense. Um, I haven't like listened to any of his more recent shit. I'll be honest. I hate. I take it back. I was curious to know like what he has done recently because I don't think I've heard a song of his since like that summer, whatever. Remember I used it on Ray's Bars a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, Whatever the summer song was, um, which I think that was probably 2012 or so. I don't know. But um, he had an album come out in like 2017. That was all like fucking country songs and shit. Mm -hmm. Like I started listening to it and <sighs> for what that is, it's fine. But that is not my cup of tea at all. Like he's gone beyond like my preferred yeah. genre obviously but i do like you know what kid rock has kind of done with his whole career like he's an interesting like study you know he what i mean his place like he's our like it doesn't have to be for me for it to belong you know what i'm yeah. saying it has a place that it belongs and i do think it's probably good like for us as a country that he exists okay i think kid rock is somebody that is obviously well acquainted with black culture. Yeah. And I think having him placed in the country world can kind of combat some of like, hmm, that's an interesting things take. that like, I think we have like, it's, I don't want to say like a mole inside country music, you know what I'm saying? But like we have somebody that like can kind of reach out to people that we might not otherwise reach and kind of, right. He's from like the inner city. You know what I'm saying like he, he of, can branch that yeah. for us. And like, I think that's good that we have that. Like, okay. I don't, I can respect I'm that. I'm sure that kid rock probably is like waved a rebel flag or two in his time. <laughs> like, I'm sure there's some things here that I don't rock with. Right. But like, I don't think he's a racist. I don't think he's a terrible person. Like, I think it's good that he can help us like, kind of like branch those worlds. Okay. That's cool to me. I dig that. Like, well, he, the, he's got I, his place. I don't know much about the man himself, but I, th I think he's, you know, I agree with everything you said. I, th I think this album is um, pretty, I think it's still pretty good, man. I, I don't know. If, if you like, you know, Detroit type rap shit, I think this is a, a good example of like a 
kind of different. Oh, this is trailer park rap. For yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's what I'm trying to for say. For sure. <laughs> Maybe I, I just that speaks to me, man. What's that say about me? Yeah. Um, all right. Well, what do you what are you picking for next week? Well, on that same note, we're gonna go with some more trailer park rap, and we're gonna uh, go to Kid Rock's homeboy, Uncle Cracker, and we're gonna yeah. listen to Double Wide. All right, Double Wide. Yeah. So this is an album I had when I was young. Okay. Um, this is the follow me. Everything is yeah. all right. Okay. Um, that was like his big single, and if that's all you ever heard from him, which I think is probably the case for most people, yeah, um, you wouldn't know it. But that album's a rap album, bro. Okay. His first album, Double Wide, the it's one below. Yeah. That one. Why is there um, two versions of every one of his albums? That's weird. One's right. probably edited. One's edited. One's not. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, but it's only eleven songs. Okay. Um. I loved this album okay. when I was young. I have not listened to it since I was young, <laughs> okay. so it might be terrible. We'll see if it holds up. Um, I will say on this, before we listen to it, I just want to preface everybody that, first of all, Follow Me, that song everybody knows, Yeah, they play that at work all the time. I okay. tell everybody. Um, people don't know it, but that song's about heroin. Oh, okay. Swim through your veins like a fish in the sea. Mm. So when you listen to that song, keep that in mind, because it'll change the song for you. That's interesting. Second... The one song I really remember from this album is called Aces and Eights. Okay. And it was tight. So just pay attention to that one. Okay. Give it an I extra will. ear, an attentive, you know, whatever. Okay. But I remember loving this. I don't really remember anything else past that. So it's going to be a refresher for me. All right. I look forward to hearing it. Yeah. We'll see how we feel about it. Uh, oh, well, yeah. And last thing I want to mention on the throwback uh, tip, I did listen to... Um, um, Fuck, Brother Ali's album again a couple times this past week too. Just because I felt, you know, I, I mentioned last week, I felt like I was almost like missing, you know, maybe something. But um, I especially paid attention to this couple songs toward the end, the uh, uh, the song about his wife Fahim or, yeah. and uh, walking away or whatever. It yeah, was. and I listened to those again with uh, with an extra ear after we talked. And um, you know, I I love what he's doing there. It's really cool. Um, it just it's not my shit you know and I, I didn't bring this up again just to shit on him but I, I wanted to let you know that i did give it another fair shake because i may i thought maybe i didn't the first time around um and i do i did appreciate his lyrics a little bit more like once i paid more, a little more attention to him i think brother ali's he's a better lyricist thoughtful lyricist than he is like a song maker and and that, again that's not to shit on him at all but I think a lot of his songs just don't really vibe well with me, but I I feel what he's saying, you know, you feel more like often Brother than Brother Ali, like part of the Brother Ali thing is you just like once you get familiar with him, you feel like it's his, it's your guy. Like that's my guy. Okay. So like when he's speaking about his life and shit, I feel like it's like my homie and shit. Yeah, I get that. Like I think that's part of the draw to Brother Ali. It's like I feel like that's my guy. He keeps it very real, but I feel like like if I knew him in real life, like we wouldn't be friends. And that's and that's I, not because I dislike him. I just he's like on a different wavelength than me you know oh, what i mean no, see i feel like me and chop it I <laughs> yeah that's like my guy i feel like even if i met him like i wouldn't ha really like be able to even talk to the fucking no, guy I feel, like I, talk, I feel like we could have dinner kid rock on the other hand i feel like me and him could uh mix it up <laughs> drink a bud light together yeah, right <laughs> yeah i'll go i'll drink a bud light with kid rock all right man well i'm looking forward to checking out uncle crack all right cool week, all right? Watch an Iconic Clash if you watched or if you listen. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you. Yeah, make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment on all your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Please subscribe on YouTube. You can subscribe right here, clicking this little stupid button that's down here, and uh, uh, check us out on Spotify if you got that. If whatever podcast app you got, we're on there. So follow us, and shit. right? But dang, da dang, diggy, diggy. Oh, <laughs> peace, y'all.